Hey everybody, Lux into Swirl here. New day, new project. Probably won't end on a cup, but we'll have to see where this goes. <laughs> so if any of you watch Artsy Mad Woman, which you absolutely should, because she's awesome, uh, you will probably have seen a recent video she did where she investigated for the first time Sola wood flowers. And I had never heard of them before seeing her video, so this is my first time because I immediately went to the website and I ordered some. I ordered a much, much, much smaller collection than she did to start with. She does a lot of bigger projects than I do. I tend towards smaller things. So I went with a small collection. This is called, I believe, the Smoky, Smoky Amethyst collection of dye colors. Honestly, I, this is way more pinkish than I would normally go, but um, I thought this was the prettiest collection they had. You could also pick out individual colors and do your own thing completely. I just decided to go with a co color combo they had pre-picked for me. And then I got a mini assortment of skinless flowers. These are the flowers that you can very easily dye. They don't come pre-colored. They're just uh, little flowers made from whatever Sola wood is. I need to do a little more research, admittedly. I do not know exactly what it is, but we're going to open these up and take a look at them. And then we're going to dye some because I want to see this in action. And then we're going to figure out what to do with them. I am not known for making um, big display pieces. I think I already said that. Ooh, these are very soft. So this is sort of a, it feels like um, a wood pulp. No, it doesn't. It feels like, oh, this is gonna drive me nuts. Pith is the right word, P-I-T-H. Um, <laughs> wow, it's hard, to, it's hard to explain. It's very soft, it's very fibrous. Um, if, you, if you unwrap a small tree branch, the, the stuff that's right underneath the bark, but before you get to the wood, that's what this feels like, except it, it's not wet. It's just very soft and very dry. I expect it will soak up the dye beautifully, and that's what we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna pull a few out, and we will mix up each one of these colors. We have frosted mulberry, concrete, rosewood, pink lemonade, and powder pink. Let me get some smaller containers, and we will start mixing. Stay tuned. Okay, fun Halloween interlude. So again, if you've been watching Artsy Mad Woman, and you should, <laughs> You will know she goes nuts for decor at Halloween time. And she is transforming her entire, at least the living room area of her apartment, maybe more, to Halloween, total Halloween decor. I am not going to do anything like that, but the other day I found some stuff at Target and I just, I have to share. I have to share. So I'm going to share. Here is the first piece. This is a doorbell that you can hang up on your door. It is completely independent of your doorbell system. But when somebody walks up to your door, they push the doorbell. Yeah, I'd want to go in, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you just want to go in if you, if you, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. In the same vein, we have a door knocker <laughs> because you can't just have a doorbell. I want to get this in frame. You need a door knocker. I have not taken these apart yet. These are still the try me demo things that they do in store. There's this one that I need to turn the lights out for best effect. So hang on a sec. Now this will look better when I take it out of the box, but again, this is still demo mode. But look, it's one of these plasma balls. Isn't that just so cool? Oh, I love how it follows your finger or your hand. So flipping cool. I have one of theirs from last year that's very similar to this. I'll go get it. Yeah, this is the one from last year. Exactly the same principle. It's a skull. This has, um, <laughs> I don't know, 
for lack of a better phrase, Frankenstein-ish things here. And it does the same thing. It follows your finger or your whole hand. Isn't that cool? That is just so cool. I always wanted one of these. I would see these in various, you know, early Star Trek, other sci-fi stuff on TV and in movies, and I just, oh, I want one of those. And now you can have one. You can have one. 15 bucks. Target. All right, and finally, here's what's hanging on my door, or will be when I put it back up there, so that everybody knows what's going on in my craft room. It's so true. It's just so true. All right, thank you for joining me for this Halloween interlude. And we're back. All right, so I'm gonna put some water in each one of these. Probably too much. That's... So I'm gonna put in some dye. It's very thick. These are one ounce containers that I got in this collection. You can also get four ounce containers. I may have to add more dye. I may have to use less water. I figure we'll, we'll test with this first one first. All right, let's see here. also say once you dip it you can start sort of spreading the petals a little bit just to get a, a more opened looking flower. I don't know that we even need to do that with this one. It's very pretty though. Let me dip it again. I've got my little uh, cookie rack over here that that is not used for cookies but that was its original intention. I'm just going to put my flowers on there to rest. Okay, that seems to be good. Put this aside. So let's do the exciting color of concrete and see what happens. To see that? There, it's went around a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Ugh. Ah! Kind of cool. Kind of creepy, kind of cool. It's that time of year anyway, right? All right, mix a little more in here. Some of this. I assume the more color you add, the richer and deeper the, the, dye, the dye job on the flowers would be. But we'll see how it picks up this concrete look. I need to add more dye in here, this one. Certainly looks gray. I have two of each color. I think I'm gonna call it today or for this video. Actually, for this section of the video, because we're not done. This was just testing the dyes and dyeing the flowers. We have more to come, but first these have to dry thoroughly. So I will bring you back when that happens. See you in a sec. And we're back. Okay, these have dried completely. So what I wanted to do was somehow add some accents. And uh, the easiest idea I came up with is to try gilding the edges with a couple of my gold leaf pens. I have a gold and I have a copper. And I think it will be beautiful, but I don't know that for sure. <laughs> so we're gonna give it a try just along the edges.
that's not bad. Not very exciting, but it's not bad. This is the gold, that, that was the copper, this is the gold. Again, I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that one. So anyway, I'm gonna let these dry again, just to make sure the gold and the copper adhere. And I am going to uh, spray them thoroughly, all sides, with Rust-Oleum Clear Spray, probably a couple layers. Let that dry thoroughly, and then I'll bring you back for the next part, because we have more to go. Stay tuned. And we're back. All right, I think I've got all my stuff together. This project has taken way more time than I thought it would. But anyway, these have all dried. Our solo flowers have dried. And my underwhelming uh, gilding of the edges completely dried. I have sprayed these top and bottom thoroughly with two coats of Rust-Oleum Clear in the hopes that I've sealed the dye into the flowers. I don't know if that's going to be adequate. Don't know what's going to happen. We'll find out. And what we're going to do is I'm going to mix up a crap ton of resin, deep casting resin. Here's what I'm going to use. This is liquid glass for two to four inch pores, which should cover what, the two molds I'm using. Uh, it's a two to one ratio, so double this to the amount of the activator. And I'll mix it up. And uh, at first I will dip these flowers into the resin before I put them in here in the hopes of illuminating some of the potential bubbles that will probably happen anyway in between the petals, but I'll try. I'm gonna put as many as I can into here. I was just gonna do like three, but they're gonna float because I wanna do this pour all at once. So I'm gonna put more than three in and you know try and position them as best I can. Uh, pour this in, it will be completely clear. I'm not gonna add anything to it. And it will produce a gorgeous 4.2 inch diameter flat bottom orb. So that'll be fun. These two molds, these both these molds are from AAJ Molds. I'll link to everything below. I'm gonna use my rainbow additive. This will be after I pour the orb with the flowers. So then I will add rainbow and I will add glass beads and I will pour, this is a tea light holder that is also kind of, kind of orby looking, but it has an indent at the top for a tea light to sit in. And we'll see what we get. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna gear up, put it on silent fast mo, and sit back and enjoy the show. And we're back. It's been probably more than a week for me. It's been split second for you. <laughs> so this is the finished result. 
still in the mold of our Sola wood flowers in a resin globe. I can see a whole bunch of bubbles. That is the resin I poured in initially that you watched me pour shrunk as it as it set up and cured over that week. So last night I went in and I poured some ClearCast 7050 just to top everything up. And that's where the bubbles are. Um, I let it sit and I spritzed it with alcohol, but I still got some bubbles on the base. I'm not particularly worried about it. I just want to see how the flowers turned out. Uh, they, they clearly did float during the first 24 hours when this was still liquid. I went in, I had them in my uh, utility room and I went in there periodically and poked them back down into place and clearly they didn't like that. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? Who knows how this is going to turn out? We will when we see. I brought some soapy water along because I suspect I'll need that kind of help getting this out of here. So let's just let's just put it in here and go for it. Yay! Oh, God, that... Not too much blood. <laughs> oh, wow, that hurt. <laughs> yep, they are knuckle busters. All right. Oh, that is gorgeous. There are dyed and gilded and not really where I wanted them, but it's okay. Solo wood flowers. I like this side a lot. Yes, I do have bubbles. Again, I tried. This is my first time using this mold. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. This side, nah. This side, beautiful. Okay, well, while we're here busting my knuckles open, I wanna try taking this tea light out too. This is the one that I put the glass beads in. I'll bring my water back, that season did seem to help. Yeah, soapy water. Ooh, look, I've got bubbles. That's what I was hoping for. I was seriously hoping for bubbles, that it would look like bubbles. Look at that, that is so cool. I will dry this one off and we will put a tea light in it as well, just to see how that looks. Okay, all cleaned up. So what do I think of these? Honestly, I love them. I absolutely love them. <laughs> this is my first sphere. I'm very proud of myself. It's not horrible. If I could have fit two more flowers in there, I think it would have it would have ended up perfect, really. Totally balanced. I love how this side looks. Absolutely love it. Yes, I have bubbles. I don't care. How do I like the solo wood flowers? They were very easy to work with, very easy to dye. If smoky amethyst, meaning pinks and purples and grays, is your jam, then this would be the collection of dyes for you. Uh, it's not really my thing. I would have gone for much more dramatic, uh, deep blues, uh, aqua, of course, teal, um, maybe even black. I think some collection like that with a, a one bright light color in there as contrast would be absolutely stunning. They do not seem to bleed at all in resin. They behave beautifully. Uh, I, get, I get no sense at all that there's any problem or any conflict with the resin whatsoever. Um, I think it looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, uh, and uh, sharp. <laughs> Just beware, sharp. But uh, I love the mold. I love the flowers. I love how the resin turned out. I just, the whole project is fantastic. And this, oh my God, this is just too cool with the bubbles in it. I don't know if you can see right down into it. Uh, let's see if I put black behind it, if that... What kind of effect that, that shows off the holographic glitter more. I like, I like the look of the bubbles better. So maybe like this and then zoom right down in there. Just, just absolutely stunning in the side view. I wish I'd put more beads in all the way up to the top, but every time I tried, I pushed more resin out and <laughs> it would have overflowed the work table. So didn't want to do that exactly, but I just, I love the look of this. So I'm definitely doing this again. All right, so now for the prettier shots, we're going to try. I'm not real good at staging and lighting and all that, as you already know, probably, but we'll give it a shot. So take a look. <laughs> 